Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of well, our podcast. Yeah. Our welcome. podcast. Yes. This welcome. Is you can see it's a bit of a mess. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, it doesn't look like a mess, but on our side it's havoc. Yeah. So I guess uh let me head the intro, I guess. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. So today's episode is well about 2020 and what to expect. So 2019 is coming to an end and there has been quite a lot of new and innovative products. Uh we mainly saw the emphasis for cost to performance in mobile phones alongside camera quality taking a huge leap. From the likes of Apple and their new Mac Pro to Samsung's rollout of their powerhouse Note 10 and Note 10 Plus series. In this video we'll be talking about 2020 and what to expect in the technology sector as we are experiencing another surge in innovation. Xbox Series X. Um Xbox Series X was announced for a holiday 2020 release back in early December 2019. Uh the Series X boasts improved performance claiming that they're still using the Zen uh, um the AMD CPU and GPU if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Uh and a fresh uh, look keeping the kind of Xbox One X aesthetic. Yeah. Kind of looking like a Corsair one. But uh, yeah. yeah, they're going in that direction and also Microsoft claims the new console can run games at 4K and at 120 frames per second and the storage will consist of a high speed SSD. And the price hasn't been announced but many speculate that the series will start with the lowest being at around $350 and could reach up to $500 for the flagship model itself. Uh this could be a sign that consoles are taking notes from phones and are starting to cater to set price points with select features at each point. Uh we could probably see the low version not run at 4K 120 but probably just 4K 60. The high end claims to run at 8K at 30. Yeah. But uh we will see when it comes out and when the prices come out. Uh so far the competitor PS5 uh Sony they said that there's not going to go above $900 going to be way less but we will see So the next point is Samsung's 108 megapixel camera sensor. Uh it's the first ever camera sensor that has an output of more than 100 megapixels which is gigantic and yeah. also the photos taken are almost comparable to that of a DSLR due to its improved daylight and night time functions. Samsung also claims that new sensors can record maximum resolutions of 6K at 30 FPS, yeah, which is a bit of a long shot. We'll see yeah. everything when this yeah. when it comes out. It seems really impressive, so yeah. we'll see everything. Uh so I even heard a Xiaomi made use of their new sensor in their recent flagship. I mean Xiaomi they release phones almost every month at this point, flagship phones. The Note 10 with that Penta camera setup. Yeah, the Reno- It its main camera was of course the new Samsung 108 megapixel sensor. Now this new sensor will usher in even thinner phones and possibly more cameras I guess. Looking on the 5G side of things with 5G networking and where it's applied in applications, uh, we have 5G speeds which range from 50 megabits to 1 gigabit per second, which is uh, impressive to say because um 4G it's also it was already impressive when it came out now 5G is boasting a lot more yeah, than what it, what we have now 5G networks are expected to be a norm by the end of 2020 since we know that the mid band of 5G has already been out in the open yeah. and is already being tested by some companies such as Verizon and uh, in major especially in major cities around the world uh, we should be expecting a 5 year period in which network carriers will be converting their existing networks to 5G uh yeah that's uh, pretty amazing you know we 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 had 4G but now 5G 5G is ex- expected to support the pursue of fully autonomous cars um because you know 5G it it basically has lower latency due to its uh, short band if I'm not wrong yeah. and that means more innovation more room and uh, less chance of error on uh, the human side uh in the health sector Development of remote vital monitors are ongoing as 5G offers a more constant and reliable connection due to its short band technology. Um I'm getting news that they're developing microchips to inject in newborns which will allow them from birth to possibly uh a docilence if I'm not wrong. They can monitor vitals, uh look out for potential diseases, any health complications before it's more evident. Mm-hmm. 
Also in disaster recovery as emergency responders can use real-time broadcasting to view environments that are hard to reach by oneself. It can be made use by use of drones which can be constantly surveilling uh, environments for like to emergency responders like yeah. in case something happens and drones can just be sent out. They can get real-time data. of like surveillance and everything to the emergency response. Yeah, regarding regarding the disaster recovery, I saw Nokia developed a drone, you know, they made a drone that can have a full fat proper IR and a night vision uh, camera. Uh yeah, he yeah. I believe uh, Mr. Who's the boss was the one who went all the way to their uh, headquarters and reviewed it or yeah. rather yeah. showed it. Yeah. It's impressive how far we've come especially with the 5G technology. We're going to see more improvement, more autonomy. and possibly better technologies All right so Half-Life Alex uh, you might have not heard of it if you have you may know it is a addition to the Half-Life series developed by Valve Game Studios for those who don't know it's a pretty big game uh, Half-Life the series itself has a lot of controversy people want number 3 but uh doubt we're going to get number 3 soon but regarding that uh half-life has a cult following so half-life alex the new edition is a vr exclusive game and we're expecting close to more than a million people likely to pre-order this or even buy it um because on the steam on the steam platform where it's mainly going to be advertised on or marketed yeah uh we already have a way above or roughly close to even a million people that are using VR headsets uh to game so due to Half-Life Alex being a, a VR game it's also going to inspire other sectors such as the movie industry and the medical field to make use of VR headsets yeah. and the game also has a passive effect as it is encouraging for the development of more innovative headsets that would eventually make way for affordable VR headsets and i saw in an article recently where this game half-life alex yeah. alex right that's yeah, how you say yeah. it yeah it was tested using eight different VR headsets and uh, i'm not sure what the results were i didn't fully read it but like they're fully testing this game out yeah um also the game is kind of retailing for $60 so it's a triple a title of course uh, first for a VR game Yeah. You see VR games go for like $10, maybe $25 at most. Um the reason why we're going to see a spike is because Steam is offering it for free to Valve Index owners and people who are buying the Valve Index, which kind of attracts more. I mean, you're getting a free game for what like a $300 headset. Mm-hmm. I I'd, I'd be down for that. Uh yeah. Uh so to conclude, uh 2020 will see the next turning point in the tech sector. Uh especially in the mobile department as we are seeing a fundamental change in smartphones as compared to the repetitive refresh in the laptop department uh we've seen the likes of Asus busy trying to cater towards more content creators yeah. and more workstation on the go kind of things but the real changes we're seeing like the real physical and kind of influential changes we're seeing are in phones especially since uh, phones like the new Samsung Galaxy S11 yeah and in fact the Galaxy S series in general and Apple they tend to create the template for the perfect flagship smartphone and people tend to follow that uh, manufacturers they tend to kind of make it similar or rather duplicate the qualities of that uh, anyway i hope you guys enjoy the video uh, if so please do leave a like and subscribe as we have more tech related videos for 2020 And I guess we'll see you in the next uh, short podcast. Yes, we will. All right. And see you guys in the next 2020. Hope you guys had a Merry Christmas and hope you guys have a Happy New Year. We'll see you in the next good year. Peace. Peace.